Coming out of L.A., Ken Block is your new points leader. 18 points ahead of Johnny Weeman. Ken, there's no surprise about it. All the drivers out here are saying you're the favorite on this course. What do you think? Uh, well, <laughs> I have thousands and thousands of miles of com competition on gravel stages, so <laughs> this is a lot of fun for me. I'm really enjoying it. So, uh, you know, coming out and being able to, you know, win qualifying yesterday and now be able to win a, a heat just uh, means a lot for me. So I'm trying to win this championship. So uh, today's going well. You won on dirt in Charlotte. What is the difference between Charlotte and this course? Uh, well, this is a lot softer gravel it, it digs up a lot more uh, Charlotte was a, a lot harder a lot smoother uh, it, it got shiny and less grippy really fast so completely different sort of approach of how you throw the car in uh, but you know for me it, it's fun because the lines are constantly changing and you're having to find grip and I just really enjoy that aspect of it I, I, I do like tarmac driving and you know the consistency of it but I also really enjoy the unpredictability of this Ken Block he can taste that championship Thanks, Kristen. We're getting ready to go racing here out at Dirtfish. Look at this place. It's now a rally school. It used to be the Snoqualmie Falls Lumber Company from 1917 all the way to the 1990s. And it is an absolutely beautiful location out here at the foot of the Cascade Mountains. Well, you look at the planer barn there. 600 feet of the course actually goes inside that barn. It is long. It is very tight. You go from light to dark. And we've seen a lot of excitement on the way out of the barn. Well, let's take a look around our course here at Dirtfish. Well, test drop right on top of the old Snoqualmie Falls Lumber Company. This track looks like something straight out of a video game. Every conceivable surface type is represented. Gravel, mud, sand, asphalt, and concrete. And it starts right here on the black square. That's your starting grid through the fastest part of the track through turns one and two. And then it tightens up in these switchbacks at turns three and four and five and six. Then you're off the dirt, back onto the pavement and into that 600 foot long. It's almost like Monaco. You go into the tunnel, come out in the sunshine. That's where the penny bo pe penalty box is if you have a drive through penalty. And then through eight and nine, switch backs through 10. And then it's over the tabletop jump, which also serves as our finish line. Now remember, once per race, you're allowed to take the joker lap. And that'll cut from turn one right over to turn four. Easily the greatest shortcut we've ever seen. It's a huge time advantage. It'll be fascinating to see how that plays out today. We've already seen some great racing action here, starting in heat number one, Ken Block and Nelson Piquet Jr. there. Piquet was fighting with Tanner Faust, but Piquet managed to hang on to second spot. Ken Block, though, well, he looked like he's supposed to look here at Dirtfish, took a convincing win in heat number one. And then moving on to heat two. See Patrick Sandell side by side with Johnny Weeman, and this was a huge moment. That is David Higgins taking the shortcut. He comes across the line, hits Steve Arpin. That actually led to a penalty for Higgins, a 10 second penalty to the final result. But Johnny Weeman holds on to his points position in second with the heat win, followed by Sandell. In the third heat this morning, we had Scott Speed in that green VW. He is in that points championship. Sverre Isaacson, though, leading it out in the blue and white Subaru. Unfortunately for Isaacson, he would break down. His teammate also having troubles. Bucky Lassick going into the tires. This race, though, won again by Reese Millen, who is having a great end to the season. Scott Speed managed to get himself some points coming in second. When we come back from the break, we have live racing here from Seattle. Be sure to join us for Red Bull Global Rallycross Seattle. Welcome back, everyone. You're looking at a picture of downtown Seattle. Just east of there, you'll find the Dirtfish Rally School here in Snoqualmie, Washington. And what an epic, epic track this is going to be. Oh, this place is awesome. It's eight tenths of a mile, quite a bit longer than the courses we've seen this year. Ten turns, 65-35 dirt to pavement ratio. But I don't believe that number test because there's a lot of dirt dragged onto the paved sections. It's very slippery there. And of course, it's built around an old lumber mill started way back in 1917 and there's all kinds of debris here so tire management is key so you don't get a puncture well you've heard townsend and i talk a lot about this track but let's take a ride around the track now our gopro course preview with austin dine 
Austin Dine, welcome to sunny Seattle. Uh, this is your Red Bull Global Rally Cross GoPro course preview. Here we are off the line. It's a big transition, goes from tarmac to dirt. Here's uh, turn one, it's pretty hairy and slippery as you can see. And coming into turn two, you just gotta bring it down all the way in there towards that dirt and hope it sticks. And same thing right here, it's really loose. And just trying to get your, trying to get the gears down, just trying to get as much traction as possible can. Come in turn five, get it over so you get a good run in turn six. And go through that building is uh, definitely pretty hairy. Get up to uh, fourth gear right here, down the brakes, back down the second gear, slide out the building, back to power. And just trying to keep the car as straight as you can through these corners. It's pretty slick as you can see in a lot of standing water. Grab the handbrake, get it over. I'm trying to get as much traction as you can and just up shifting early, early, just getting power down. Coming to the last corner of the racetrack right before the jump. Get it set, shift, keep shifting, just trying to get traction real loose. And that's your GoPro course preview. Well, what is Red Bull Global Rallycross? It's two six-lap heats to start, where the top three will advance straight through to the final. Then a last-chance qualifier, where the top four go in to our 10-car, 10 10-lap 10 final. Getting ready to race here out at Dirtfish and a massive crowd. This is rally country. They really do enjoy this racing here. There's a ton of enthusiasts that come out for this, and it's a, it really takes GRC back to its roots with a longer course, a lot of obstacles, and a varied terrain for these guys to race on. And uh, as we said, already seen a lot of excitement here, but we're getting ready to go. Our Royal Purple starting grid for first heat. Block and Millen on the front row, and Ken Block is really working hard trying to get this championship. Going back to road two, Nelson P.K. Jr. with Tanner Faust in that new Volkswagen Beetle. Nelson P.K. Jr. looks quick so far. He's got a lot of points to make up after leading previously. And on the third row, the two ringers, the dirt guys, Brian Deegan and David Higgins. And Higgins certainly on, on any day could do well in a course like this. Absolutely. He's a multi-time rally champion, multi-time Asian rally champion, UK rally champion. But this guy has been the one to beat. We're on board with Ken Block. And boy, you, you see him in practice qualifying around this circuit. Ken and his car, that Ford Fiesta, that M Sport build, it really is hooked up around here. Great shot there. He's breathing, psyching himself up, getting ready. Whereas, by contrast, Nelson PK just looks like he's kind of sitting, waiting for the bus or something. Well, he was a little too psyched there in Los Angeles. A lot of contact. Everything went wrong, but he's got a chance to make it right. Here we go. Green lights, and we are racing a Dirtfish block, and Reese Millen on the front row. Will they dive straight into the Joker? Oh, and it looks like Ken Block and Deegan take the Joker. The rest of them opt to stay on the longer course, and they'll wait for that Joker lap. So Ken Block leading out Brian Deegan. We've looked at this Joker. We figure maybe 13, 14 seconds is the advantage you get on the rest of the field as they come in through this planar part. This is amazing. This really is like Monaco F1. It's, you know, really hard today because you come out into the sunlight. It's a beautiful day here in Seattle. And Faust already with an issue there. Not sure if he had contact, went off course, but he's back underway. And look at Ken Block. The travel in the suspension on that car is just tailor-made. You can see how much wheel travel there is to absorb all of this varied terrain his traction in and out of the corners is amazing so first lap is in the books and ken block is leading out brian deegan deegan would love to come in here to dirtfish and be a spoiler because he's got the skills but ken block has just looked like the class of the field over the last few events he really has come into his own late in the season and it's been interesting to see how ken has adjusted as we see millen takes oh. the joker and millen to the inside of deegan side by side and they're heading for the barn well, that didn't work for Reese Millen, but speaking of coming into your own late in the season, Reese Millen, they have figured out how to make that Hyundai Veloster hook up, and it is absolutely spectacular, the performance he's getting late in the season. It was great to see his success at Los Angeles. He was very emotional after the race. Tons of hard work going into that Hyundai to pick up the pace, and now he really wants to take second place from Brian Deegan. And from the looks of it, he is being held back now by Brian Deegan, so he needs to find a way to get into that clear air because I think he can catch up to Ken Block. 
And I think this is a track that really plays to Reese Millen's driving strengths. I mean, his whole career has been spent essentially sideways, whether it's, you know, drifting, film driving, Pikes Peak rally, and he's very tidy with his slip angles and the rotation of his car. And, and like you said, all that development with the Hondas sure been oppressive. So he lost a little bit of ground there to Brian Deegan, but I guarantee you he'll make it up pretty quick. Top three in this heat advance directly through to the final, but when we look at this, Nelson Piquet Jr. and David Higgins have not taken the Joker. You must take it one time per race, and we know it is a massive time save, so they're going to try and pull up as close as they can, especially to that third place. So right now, under threat, I would say, is going to be Reese Millen. There's no question on that, about that as we're back on board with Ken Block as he crosses the finish line. Still three laps to go, and he has opened up a nice gap. Now, Nelson PK Jr., the first to not take the Joker. As we look further back, PK is that fourth car in line, and he's likely to wait until the last lap to make that Joker attempt. Unless he catches Reese, he might opt earlier. He stays out, no Joker for PK yet. And he's within a couple of seconds of Reese Millen, so now if he took that Joker, he would certainly pass Reese Mill and then take that third place, may even move into second. Really enjoy watching Brian Deegan just kind of smooth things out here. He's opened up a nice gap over Reese Mill, and Deegan hasn't run the whole season. He's here with a very small crew this weekend. Earlier today, gave his daughter, Haley, a ride in his Rallycross supercar, and she was blown away. 13 years old, she loved it. And Brian coming in here, as you say, set up almost looking like a privateer, but we know he has you know, the, the quality and the skills to do well here. But look at this, Nelson Piquet Jr. catching up to Reese Millen. And again, he has not taken the Joker. And he's close enough now to where he's going to be starting to get held up from Reese. It wouldn't surprise me if he takes the Joker here. here. Yes, he does. There goes PK. Now, where does he come out relative to Ken Block? There goes Block. PK comes out in second place behind Ken Block. So he got in front of Brian Deegan. And Reese, this is great driving from PK Jr. Just the sort of thing he needed after a disastrous weekend in Los Angeles. He needs a strong finish, but remember, Ken Block is your championship leader. So if he can catch Ken and get ahead of him, that'll help him make up ground in the championship. So there goes Millen out behind Brian Deegan. Remember, top three transfer straight through to the final. And we're coming up to the final lap. So. Right now, it's really important for Reese Millen to get on this. He got to get past Brian Deegan. Meanwhile, David Higgins, though, he has not taken the joke. We have to see how far he is back from this fight. And if we're hearing that Higgins just received a stop and go penalty in the penalty box, not sure what that would be for, but that's going to put a big damper on his hopes to uh, make up that joker lap and come across for a strong finish as we watch Ken Block and just a perfect run. And we understand that the Higgins penalty is from contact with Tanner Faust, who we saw running slow early, and that must have been a result of the contact with David Higgins. Look at the pace that PK is it's showing amazing. here. amazing. He is really looking good. I don't think he's going to catch Ken before the checkered flag, but this really helps him set up for that final. So two turns left on this Dirtfish Rally School course, and Ken Block is going to come through and again will win one of these heat races. He is so good and looks so smooth right now. He's going to be Woo. tough to beat in the championship. Got to love the little tail whip that he threw in there at the finish. Third place for Brian Deegan, and we don't see Reese Millen, which is really interesting. There's a battle between Higgins and Faust, and I've got a feeling uh, our race director may be having a word with both of them after this heat. But this one was all Ken Block start to finish. Look at that. Ken Block, Nelson Piquet Jr. and Brian Deegan are going through to our final. Our next heat will be up on the race grid when we return to Red Bull Global Rallycross Seattle. Welcome back, everyone, to beautiful Snoqualmie, Washington. Well, our first three already through to the final. Block, PK Jr., and Brian Deegan. The rest of that heat have to go into the last chance qualifier. Great heat, though, for Block, PK, and Deegan. And especially PK, who desperately wants to resume that championship lead. You see him taking the Joker lap there, and that got him into the transfer spot, allowed him to finish second in the heat, just ahead of Brian Deegan in the Rockstar car on board with PK as they take this Joker lap. And he did a brilliant job to come home in the top two. 
So PK putting in a great drive. He's down with Kristen Kenny. Great driving out there, Nelson. How do you know when to take the Joker at just the right time? Well, I mean, have a spotter, and uh, obviously I could, I could see around the track. You know, I could see that uh, Deegan and uh, who was in front of me. I think it was uh, Reese. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that I was catching them up, and uh, you know, the Joker here is pretty helpful. So, uh, you know, I just had my clean laps in front of me when I catched them and just took it. It was. Uh, just the way it should be, calm and easy, and uh, yeah, the car's working well, no problems, no issues, so that's the main thing. You're chasing down Ken Block. What will it take to beat Ken Block out on this course? Honestly, I thought he was going to be stronger, you know. Um, obviously, in practice, he was flying, and uh, but in the races, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's taking it easy on us, you know. Uh, I think, obviously, he's leading the, the points now, so he's just uh, playing it a bit safe, you know. But, uh, you know, if, if, if I didn't have a bit of traffic and I've had a, you know, I... Honestly, my, my first two, three laps weren't the best. If we had better, better, a little bit track time, uh, I think we could have we could have passed him actually. So, or he's or we catched up to him, or he's taking it easy and uh, he's gonna put his uh, right foot on the on the gas uh, for the final. When we come back, second heat up on the grid, ready to go here in Snoqualmie. Welcome back, everyone, to Red Bull Global Rally Cross from the Dirtfish Rally School here in Snoqualmie, Washington, the foot of the beautiful Cascade Mountains. Well, you're taking a look at how Dirtfish looks today, and especially look at this, the, the planer building where they actually used to make that wood from the trees. It was really a company town here. At one time, close to 2,000 employees. There was housing, a grocery store, fire department, police station. And look at these guys that put it all together. Those were the days. Well, that was the olden days, and now it is a rally school, and the best in the business come here to learn and to perfect their skills. And we decided to get the third member of our team, Kristen Kenny, a little excitement, sent her on a drive along with Subaru driver Bucky Lassick. We're here at Dirtfish Rally School, and I have been dying to get in a rally car all season long, and this is my chance. With me, I have my driver, Bucky Lassig. Hey, Yay. you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I am so excited to do this. Oh, man, this is good. This spot is awesome. This is where I came to train for Subaru when I heard I was going to uh, go and test for their seat, and it's still where I come to talk this. So cool. Let's get to it. All right, let's go. All right. Here we go. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Oh, my God. My heart is racing. That looked like a good time. Bucky Lassick there sitting in the second row on the grid, getting ready to race here. Let's take a look at our Royal Purple starting gr grid. Johnny Weeman and Patrick Sendell, their Oldsburg teammates, the Red Bull car on the left is Weeman, the Cobalt Tools Ford on the right, that is Patrick Sendell. And moving back to row two, you've got Scott Speed in the seven up car looking to make up some points. And Bucky Lassick in that Subaru. And then we move back to the third row. Sverre Isaacson, we saw him have trouble his last time out. 
and Austin Dine, who we had a little ride around the track with on our GoPro track preview. And then all the way at the back is Emma Gilmore, Reese Millen's teammate in the second Honda. I talked to her earlier today. She said, I'm still learning, but I feel like I've got my, my arms wrapped around this situation and things are getting better. And she was also talking about the excitement of that first turn and just how crushed it can get with so many cars. On board with Johnny Weeman sitting in second place in this championship. He really wants to do well. He's uh, the protege of uh, the master of rally, of course, Marcus Grunholm. And then Scott Speed, who was awesome early in the season, had some rough times lately, though. Well, Scott Speed's really known for that clean, tidy driving style, and he's had to adjust for the dirt, but we're ready to get going with Heat 2. It's green, and look at Scott Speed get the jump, trying to find a way around Weeman. Wow, four cars go for the Joker. Scott Speed has a little bobble there behind Isaacson as we see Sandell, Lasik, and Austin Dines stay on the long course. The other guys took the Joker. Isaacson all over the back of Weeman. Oh, Isaacson is just looking to prove that his super is ready to go. He really is all over the back of Johnny Weeman. Shuffled Scott Speed back into that third position. As they come back out of the barn, out of the sunlight. And it is tight there at the front, and these guys are being pretty patient. Now, Isaacson, historically known to force his way to the front, but he's had some penalties. He's had some run-in with the officials in the past and also with his own Subaru team. So he's reserving himself just a little bit here over what we've seen previously. And Johnny Weeman, of course, watched and saw that Ken Block did really well that last round. Check out this on board with Scott Speed. It is so busy through that section, very bumpy as you enter, as you see Scott make a huge correction to keep his Volkswagen in line. And I've been impressed just at how much Scott has adjusted his driving style to make this, this track work for him. Again, he's not one to really hang the tail out on any of the other tracks, and a lot of the driving here requires big slip angle, big rotation, and Scott looked pretty good in the preliminary rounds. So the 7-up VW Polo of Scott Speed comes out, and Austin Dine ducked in there on the Joker, but didn't manage to get that spot from him. Remember, top three will transfer straight through to the finals. So Austin Dine, he really wants to find a way past Speed to try and get himself into the final. Scott Speed really leading on that right rear tires. We're on board here with fourth place Austin Dine. And as the track's been drying up, you really see the, 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 the balance change as there goes Sandell takes the Joker. Let's find out where he comes out. He's going to come out behind He's Isaacson, get the throw. but he had an issue there. He might have missed a gear, comes out just in front of Scott Speed, but Speed has the run. Oh, it looked like he was really going to transfer easily through into that third spot, but a mistake there from Patrick Sandell almost cost him that position. He's going to have to hang on now, though, because Scott Speed is going to just try eating away at him. Well, that's the transfer spot, and you do not want to be in the LCQ to try to get through to the main here. You really want the breeze run of, of making it through on a heat race, and Scott Speed's doing everything he can, except now he's got Austin Dine all over the back. So Scott Speed has to get past that Cobalt Tools 4 to Patrick Sandell. And we'll have to see if he can figure out a way to make that 7-up that VW Polo make the turn. But meanwhile, Sandell is fishtailing back and forth here. And Sandell comes from a classic rally background. He loves this kind of circuit. And he's not happy just to transfer. He's going after Isaacson. And remember the other part of this story. Patrick Sandell in third, Johnny Weeman in first, our teammates. Weeman is second in the points. Speed is third in the points. So it is actually going to be a help for his teammate if Sandell can hold Scott Speed in that fourth position and make him try and get out of the LCQ. And Austin Dine is just crawling all over the rear bumper of Speed now. Austin has transferred to most of the main events this year by winning these heat races. Oh, looking the at the inside. He's inside. He pushes his way over with Scott Speed. They're side by side. No, Speed has dropped back. Austin Dine moves through. Now can he catch Sandell? Whoa. Oh, well, not if he drives off track like that. He must have over-rotated that next corner and just shot straight across the bow of Scott Speed. Well, the question now will be what happens with race control because Dine obviously cut the course and he stayed in front of Scott Speed. Bucky Lasik now taking the Joker. It looks like he's going to come out into that fourth position, so that makes it tougher for Dine to get through. 
Uh, this choker really makes a huge difference in every one of these racers. And you just don't know when it's over. You really don't. That shortcut is massive. It's, you know, well over five seconds. And it's very unpredictable, not only for us as we try to figure it out, but also for the competitors and their spotters. And another thing you've got to consider is visibility, right? Because you can get up to a car and have a visibility issue before your pace is slowed down as we come to our white flag here. One to go. So one lap to go. Johnny Weeman got a good lead now on Svera Isaksen and Patrick Sandell. This is good for Weeman because he is not letting Ken Block get any advantage in the points whatsoever. This should put him on the front row with Ken Block going into that final. And there we see the graphic. Austin Dine under review for shortcutting the courses. Sandell gets into Isaksen. Oh, nice. Whoa, and they're heading to the bar. Sandell really was giving it a go there. I love how Isaacson, anytime he gets sideways, he just masks the throttle. There is never any hesitation. And more times than not, it works for him. That Subaru just straightens itself out, of course, with four-wheel drive and 600 horsepower. As Johnny Weeman with just a perfectly clear front end, clean windshield, is idling around to the finish to take the heat win. So Weeman takes the heat win. Sandell couldn't find his way around Svera Isaacson, but he gave it a go. They round out the top three. Bucky Lassick just can't break into that top three. He'll have to go to the last chance qualifier. And Scott Speed will have to go to the LCQ. He came home in sixth place, a full, sorry, fifth place, a full 16 seconds behind Weeman. And there, Johnny Weeman over Isaacson over Patrick Sandell. So Weeman keeps that gap close with Ken Block. We'll have more racing from Snoqualmie when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Red Bull Global Rallycross. Scott Speed's team working furiously on that car because he did not advance. He has to work out of the last chance qualifier to get into today's final. So now we have six already through to the final, four spots left. Block, PK Jr., Deegan, Weeman, Isaacson, and Sandell. So they are set for the final, and the rest really are gonna have to battle to get in here. And this was the action from the second semifinal round, and that's Sandell. A little bit of a bobble, but he makes it in front of speed for that coveted transfer spot to move forward to the main. And it was all Johnny Weeman, a clear view at the front, and he's been fast, really fast, all weekend. Johnny Weeman looking good. He's down with Kristen Kenny. Johnny, how important is it to get a good start on this dirty track? It's really good. I have, a, I have had a really good feeling all day, and it's just, it just going. I'm, I'm really happy right now. I had a front row, so we'll fight for the win. What do you think facing Ken Block on that front row in the final? He will take a good start for sure, but I will. I feel I'm I'm same speed as him, or maybe a bit faster. So I just need to play with the Joker. Tess Townsend, could it get any better than this? Well, I don't know. We'll see what Ken Block has. Tess. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all about this points chase because now Johnny Weeman has held his own. Still, that 18-point gap between Block and Weeman. And it's all about the championship now. This, the penultimate round of Red Bull Global Rallycross. You're looking at the beautiful Northwest just outside of Seattle at Steve Arpin, the Canadian who would love to get himself into this final. He's going to fight out of the LCQ, which is coming up next. Be sure to join us. Welcome back, everyone. Red Bull Global Rallycross Seattle. British stunt driver Terry Grant again. Amazing the crowd. And he never, ever seems to put a tire wrong. It's just fantastic to watch this guy. How do you ensure that? I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how you do that. And check out the crowd here. This is rally country, and I got to say, a massive crowd. I mean, it was just almost impossible to get in here today. A, a true group of enthusiasts. A lot of Subaru fans up here, too. We've seen a lot of those WRXs in the parking lot. And with all the gravel roads and the back country here in the Pacific Northwest, it's a great place to stretch the limits of your car. Well, if you uh, own a fine car, you can make uh, your car at home similar to the high-performance GRC cars. And for more on that, let's get in the zone with Kristen Kenny. 
you never know what the weather will bring come race day, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. So it's really important that teams bring extra windshield wiper blades. If the windshield wiper blades get stuck full of mud, it can end a driver's race like that. So Brando's with me from Subaru to help me out here. Let's start. Let's switch. Give me that windshield wiper blade. You get the mic. And guys, this is a really easy thing you can do at home. Watch how simple this is. Pop it down, pop it out, and voila, we have the new blade here. <laughs> and boom, that's it. Voila, done. That simple, guys. I'm one step closer to becoming a rallycross mechanic. Well, we're getting ready now for the LCQ. The Royal Purple starting grid sees Tanner Faust and Bucky Lassick on the front row. And going back to row two, we've got Scott Speed next to David Higgins. Volkswagen versus Subaru on row two. And then the third row, Reese Millen, who really had hoped for more here, and Austin Dine. And Austin Dine again showing some flashes of brilliance in that heat race, but they've got to fight their way out of this last chance qualifier. And on your last row, row four, there's Emma Gilmore, Reese Millen's teammate in the Hyundai, and Steve Arpin who had an issue in the heat race and couldn't start, so he's got to come from the back and try to transfer. Remember, top four make it through. And there was a little bit of a tussle earlier on between Tanner Faust and David Higgins, the yellow and orange cars you see there. For more on that, let's check in with Kristen. That's exactly right, guys. They had a heated conversation in the pits after that ugly contact in the previous heat. Tanner's told Higgins, hey, I'm starting on the front row, so if I take pole, I'll take the joker first, so be ready not to hit me in the back, buddy. There's Scott Speed. We're sitting on board with him. He came in here third in points, and I this is going to be a hard fight for him to get out of this last chance qualifier. Top four qualify through to the final. The other four go home. He'll be battling it out with Tanner Faust, who starts up front. Here we go. So when the red lights go out, you wait for the green, and then we launch. Faust and Lassick on the front row. And a fast start for David Higgins. And Bucky Lassick does not get away. Bucky Lassick stalls on the grid. That's a big blow to his hopes as Tanner Faust and Reese Millen take the Joker along with Austin Dine. Well, Faust now in the lead by taking the Joker. We'll see how smart that move was. We have seen that the Joker can give you perhaps 13, 14 seconds on the rest of the field, but Faust has got a good launch. And for Tanner Faust, it gives him visibility, which is critical. So he's got a clean windscreen, and if he can stretch out his gap, it's going to be a smart move. So here we go, Faust. There's Bucky Lassick. He's back on track, but that was a disaster for him. He's had a couple of podiums this year, really has started to look good, and I know he was hoping to be in this final. It's been neat to watch that, that Volkswagen Beetle with Tanner Faust develop here over the last few races. Scott Speed has stayed with the Polo for a consistent platform since he's still in a championship battle. As we see Scott Speed actually take the Joker here, and let's see where he comes out. There goes Faust. There goes Millen. And, he and it looks, speed. looks like Dine's going to be right there side by side with Speed, and Speed just nips Austin Dine. And now they've both completed the Jokers, so if Speed can hold on, he'll transfer, and Austin Dine sits on that bubble in four spot. So that was a great move for Scott Speed, and as you said, he chose to stay in the polo. That green car is actually Tanner Faust's car, and, you know, Scott Speed Whoa. dumped his car, decided to take Tanner's, and he's actually been benefiting from that. So transfer out of this last chance qualifier into the final and right now that fourth spot is Austin Diamond that's who we're on board with and it sure looked like Scott Speed up ahead was gonna lose the car on the rotation and we're looking out the back of Scott Speed and Austin Dine in the back he had a big oversteer moment but he managed to hang on and if you get out wide on some of these corners tests out in that really lowly soft dirt it's really hard to not lose big time as you see Arpin just took the Joker, and Higgins also took the Joker. Oh, this should have shuffled things up a bit. Now you see Higgins is in front of Reese Millen, so that's the battle for second. That's incredible. What a great move it was. For, and Higgins has had a pretty tough go of it here in this particular race. He's been penalized a couple of times now. 
but that was a, a masterful move. So now Scott Speed is in the fourth and final transfer spot, and he's being worked on by Steve Arpin. Worked on, he's getting hammered there as Arpin gets into the left rear, but that Royal Purple car is looking fast, and Arpin desperately wants to make it through to that final. He had such a tough go in the heats, and he is pressuring Scott Speed. So Steve Arpin wants it badly. He missed his heat race because his car would not go. Now he's working. The purple and yellow car working on the green car. So this is what it's all about. This is the final transfer spot as they head into the planer barn now. Can he find a way past speed on these last few corners? Arpin's gonna have to hustle it here into the brake zone. You can see the windshield wipers working overtime. Oh. Big oversteer as Arpin has only three corners left to get it done. So here we go. Scott Speed in fourth, Steve Arpin in fifth, as Tanner Faust is rounding this one out. Great result for him. Winning the LCQ, then David Higgins, then Reese Millen, but it's all about this final spot. Who's it gonna be? Speed takes it over Steve Arpin. And that's a big relief for Scott Speed to make it through to that final. Austin Dine comes home in sixth place. Emma Gilmore and Bucky Lassick after stalling on the grid is your eighth place finisher, but it's all about those transfer spots. And you can see the relief on Scott Speed's face. He's made it through. He's the final transfer spot. But this is how David Higgins got into that spot, blazing through the Joker and slotting in front of Reese Millen. That is great driving. We got more from Red Bull Global Rally Cross Seattle when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Red Bull Global Rally Cross from the Dirtfish Rally School here in Snoqualmie. And there you see the rest of the block family having fun. And this tells a story, the wet, the mud here. We've actually had quite a challenge this weekend here in well, Washington. The conditions have varied immensely, but the, the weather looks great now. The track is drying up, and that means the speeds are building and the grip is building on these 600 horsepower GRC cars. And this start, what a disaster for Bucky Lassick. It just didn't fire. He didn't get the launch, and that spelled disaster for him in a last chance qualifier. And then here we see Arpin and Scott Speed getting into it a little bit. Speed was in that fourth transfer spot. Arpin was trying to get in, and Scott Speed held on to make it happen as Arpin finished fifth. And Arpin tried so hard but didn't make it. Tanner Faust, though, led them out. And he did a, a spectacular job in that last chance qualifier, keeping himself out front. And there you see Arpin just flailing through that last corner, trying to transfer the Royal Purple car. But here's what it looks like on the championship battle. Well, they've all worked hard to get there, but I think none harder than Scott Speed sitting in 10th place there. And one guy who didn't make it, Steve Arpin there, talking to Patrick Sandell. And I got to say, he is one of the most passionate guys in the paddock. He really loves what he does. Let's take a little look and a little learning about Steve Arpin. Hey everyone, I'm Steve Arpin, driver the number 00 Royal Purple Ford Fiesta here at the Red Bull Global Rally Cross in Seattle. When I was a kid, I grew up at the racetrack. I used to love just work, being in the garage with my dad, working on the race cars. And the next thing you know, I had the opportunity to get in. And the moment I had the opportunity to get in, it was I was hooked. That was it for, for life. This is all I wanted to do. I started out with snowmobiles and go-karts, raced sea -Doo's. As soon as I moved into full-size cars, it was dirt modifieds and mini sprints and dirt late models and Midwest modifieds. I moved on up to race the ARCA series, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, NASCAR Nationwide Series. But this GRC stuff where you get to mix it all together, driving these Red Bull Global Rallycross cars, it is so cool, it's unbelievable. It's a perfect situation having Royal Purple as a sponsor in the Red Bull Global Rallycross because all it is is high performance. All they do is make high performance lubricants. So you like to go there. So then you need Royal Purple. Otherwise your stuff's going to blow up. Okay. <laughs> this is a big week for me. I got to rush back home after the Seattle race is over and I'm getting married next week. All this bad luck these past few weeks with everything breaking and everything like that, it's like, hey, I get to get married to the most incredible woman on earth in two weeks, three weeks. Now it's one week. So even if this weekend goes bad, it's still going to be fun because I'm going home to get married. 
everyone always makes fun of me because even on a bad weekend, I'm the happiest guy in the, in the whole paddock. But actually, that kind of goes back to when I was a kid. My dad had a rule that the moment I quit having fun racing, I'm done. So it's like, I gotta, you really gotta take things into perspective. Like we can be mad and pouty and go walk and sit in our trailer and cry to ourselves, or else we can really kind of realize that we drive race cars for a living. It, can't get much better than that. So even on a bad day, it's still a pretty cool job. Gusty! Yeah! That's my boy! Let's go racing! No matter what happens to him at these races, he is one of the nicest guys in the paddock and on the track. More racing from the Dirtfish Rally School here in Snoqualmie when we come back with Red Bull Global Rallycross Seattle. Welcome back, everyone, to Red Bull Global Rallycross from the Dirtfish Rally School here outside of Snoqualmie, Washington. The easiest job this weekend is cleaning Ken Block's car. He's been up front the whole time. There's probably not much to clean off, but she's looking good, polished up, ready to go. So while they get uh, Ken's Ford ready to go, let's take a look at the highlights of our GRC Lights final. Only five cars in the final, but it was a great race here as Mitchell DeJong goes inside there with Tyler Benson on the start. And Tyler Benson goes to the point. DeJong all over the back there. But then Austin Sindrick takes that joker to come out in second, just behind DeJong, who had pulled away and opened up a huge gap. And that's a great run for Austin Sindrick in the go puck car. And he had this second place battle over Alejandro Fernandez. Really, these two were fighting for a long time through this whole race. Meanwhile, Mitchell de Jong just led this thing all the way out and got a convincing win. Really just did a brilliant job. I think it was 12 seconds there at the line, a massive lead. And you can see how happy Austin Sindrick is for a podium finish. But Mitchell de Jong has really been the story all season in GRC life. And de Jong, just a great competitor and uh, wins the championship with this win here in Snoqualmie, but fantastic young driver. We'll have to see where he goes next year if he makes the jump up. Take a look at the results here today. Yeah, Dijon with the win, Cedric in second, Fernandez comes home on the podium, Tyler Benson in fourth, and Jeff Sykes, who recovered from a big impact in an earlier round, came back to finish fifth. So this one, all about Mitchell DeYoung and the win, taking the championship here. And we caught up with Mitchell DeYoung. Mitchell, you not only won another race, but you clinched the championship. How excited are you right now? Oh, it feels amazing. You know, I've been I've been trying so hard to, to make this possible, and uh, you know, I have a, a great team, great crew guys, everything, and you know, to, to have this come true, it's, it feels amazing. Given your background in dirt, how did that play a role in today's win? Yeah, today it felt just like home, you know. Um, Finally, we got a track with some sliding. It was so much fun. One of my favorites for sure. Um, you know, just to get to slide and throw the car around, it's so much fun. So he clinches the championship. What do you do with this kid next year? I mean, I think he's got to move up. He proved himself so well. You know, a lot like a Johnny Weeman who moved up this year and has been so sensational. Kevin Erickson still second in the championship and Fernandez third. But with Mitchell, he's got a Red Bull relationship. Clearly has the skills. I'd love to see him in a supercar well, next season. Well, we saw the move happen this year where Johnny Weeman came up into the supercars, and now he's talking to Ken Block. Ken Block is in first place. Johnny Weeman only 18 points behind in the championship chase. Oldest guy in the series on the left and the young gun on the right. And they're uh, talking about what's coming up here. Should be a great final. Well, Ken Block really wants to get this championship here in Snoqualmie. He's going to have to fight to get it all the way through to the finish. And there you look inside the planing mill. I call it the Monaco Tunnel minus, uh, you know, minus all of the accoutrements of Monaco. This place is industrial, it's hardcore, and the final should just be incredible. So Ken Block is trying to get ahead and get as he can away from Johnny Weeman in the championship. Can he do it? We'll find out when we return to our supercar final. 
On November 16th, every driver will go all out for one more trophy before the offseason. The high-speed, action-packed racing of the Red Bull Global Rallycross season concludes in Sin City, Las Vegas. That's Sunday, November 16th on NBC. Do not miss it. We're ready here for Red Bull Global Rally Cross from the Dirtfish Rally School. A sellout crowd here in Snoqualmie, Washington. We're just east of Seattle, and it's been a beautiful day here in the Northwest. And take a look, there's our crowd getting ready to see this final, and the current point standings tells it all right here. It certainly does, and Johnny Weeman with an 18-point deficit. The question is, what does Ken Block have for this final? Has he been holding back, or is it gonna be really tight all the way to the finish? And we're gonna take a look at the Royal Purple starting grid. The most amazing thing is that we have Ken Block and Johnny Weeman on the front, and that, that really is a testament to how both of these guys have been driving. It's gonna be tight. Two different manufacturers, both Ford Fiestas, but two different companies that build the, their respective cars. And then back to row two, you've got Sperry Isaacson in the Subaru, Nelson PK Jr. in the Wix Ford. And then we're drifting back now to row number three. There's that rock star Ford we haven't seen in a while of Brian Deegan next to the Cobalt Tools Ford of Patrick Sandell. Either one of those two could be a spoiler in the race, too. No question. Then going back to row four, you've got Tanner Faust in the new VW Beetle, and then David Higgins making a non-championship appearance this weekend in the Subaru. And sitting way at the back of the pack, both have been winners this year. Reese Millen on the left, Scott Speed in that championship hunt. Oh, no, he got the last possible place in this final. And he really wants to get somewhere and try and tie, I mean, this man, try to take him down. Ken Block, can anyone beat him on this track? He doesn't have so much as a, a speck of dirt on the front of his car. He blew everybody away in qualifying with incredible pace. He's led the heat races, but this guy, Johnny Weeman, has been very fast. In fact, during the heat race and the semifinal, his lap times were every bit as quick as Ken Block. The start is going to be critical, as always, here in Red Bull GRC. Take a look at that shot, though. You see the sun shining in Weeman's eyes. As the sun is starting to set here in the northwest, it's really critical. You're going straight into the sun from the launch, and a great launch for Ken Block. Great launch for the whole field. Look at Tanner Faust getting out of line back there, and Weeman is side-by-side -side with Block at the front. Oh, Weeman oh, got sideways. Ken into the ball. Ken Block gets into the tire barrier. Tanner Faust is off the track. Oh, unbelievable. Just carnage at the start there, and, and Tanner is off the course. He's, I think, off the race line, so we'll have to see what happens here if it just goes with a local yellow. Stuck in a little bit of a ravine there, but just a disastrous result for Ken Block going into that first Joker run. He got into the front end, essentially like an attenuator at the front end of that concrete barrier. So we see a local yellow waving. And look at the glare. It's one thing, the glare on the start of this race, but then with the dirt on the windshield, the glare has just got to be impossible for these guys to see. Ken Block trying fighting. to get behind Weeman. Block and Weeman are battling hard at the front, and Block, I don't know if something happened there, yes. because he's getting shuffled back. He's got he an issue. Past him. Ken Block's car has some sort of a problem. Not sure if that's on the left rear, as we see Sandell take the Joker. Scott Speed takes the Joker. So let's see what happens here as Speed and Sandell come through that Joker. Look at Speed on Weeman. This is huge, because now Weeman, Speed, and Nelson Piquet Jr. are all in front of Ken Block. I had... Wow, you could not have scripted that this would have happened. We have to see what happened to Block and if he can actually continue for the whole race. The only thing that was going to slow down Ken Block this weekend was an issue on the start. And unfortunately, he had that as we see Sandell destroy the signage there. I'm not sure if there was heavy contact or if that was just his bumper wiping off the banners, but he's still on the power and Weeman holds the position as Scott Speed gets past PK there. Oh, and PK now trying on the inside of Scott Speed. So this is an absolutely fantastic battle going on here. Weeman leading them out. Now, PK's probably going to take the Joker here because he's in traffic, and he does. You see Tanner Faust trying to get out of the ravine there. PK comes through the Joker. Where will he come out? Just behind Brian Deegan. What a run for Brian Deegan. He's not running the full championship. He's in a year-old spec car. He's got two people on his crew, and he's having an incredible run currently in second. 
So things are shuffling through here at Dirtfish. This is absolutely amazing. We thought Ken Block was almost unbeatable on this track, but that tussle right at the start has proved very valuable. You're looking at Svera Isaacson about to come over that finish line. He's followed by Brian Deegan. So with all this carnage going on and this focus we've got on the championship runners as we look at Johnny Weeman, Svera Isaacson is pushing that blue and white Subaru right to the front. Now of your top runners, Weeman has not taken the Joker lap left. He currently sits about seven seconds behind Isaacson, and that'll have a massive ramification in the points if Weeman can get to the front when he takes his Joker lap with Ken Block currently sitting in nine. 24 seconds out, he's limping around the track. Sverre Isaacson, though, this is the race he was looking for. And he's really had some bad fortune this weekend, but this is looking great for him. Look at how far ahead he is of the rest of the pack. Doing a great job to get it under control there. Weeman still in fourth position, has not taken the Joker lap left. Has not taken the Joker lap yet, as you see Isaacson's lap times. And Tess, this is Subaru country. This is uh, a great sign for these guys. As we go through the field, we see Brian Deegan back there in second. Nelson PK Jr. all over the back of Deegan trying to get by for that second spot in those valuable championship points. And here comes Johnny Weeman. This will tell us a lot. Johnny Weeman to the Joker. Can he get out there in front? No, Isaacson still in front, but Johnny Weeman is close to Svera Isaacson. And he still has five laps to go. He takes second position, but he might have the pace to track down Isaacson, and he needs those winner's points to make up big ground on Ken Block. And Ken Block way off the pace now, sitting in ninth place. Of course, Tanner Faust in 10th because he was off the track in that first lap. But take a look at this glare as you come down the stretch here. Almost impossible to see. We understand that Ken Block has broken rear suspension. Doesn't surprise me after the impact that he took to that attenuator. And you can see the right rear is completely out of tow. Wow, and again, this is just like L.A. where the fortunes change in a heartbeat. Coming into L.A., Nelson Piquet Jr., 40 points up, came out 34 points down. So now Block sitting in ninth. Weeman trying to tackle Isaacson for first. And it's, it's interesting, Tess, that we see uh, right rear damage to Ken Block because it was the left rear that impacted that attenuator in the Joker. So not sure where that came from, but back up front, Isaacson is holding off Johnny Weeman. In fact, he's pulling out a little bit of a gap. That Subaru's been developed so much this year. They put a lot of resources into that. As here comes oh, Nelson nice. PK on Deegan. Whoa! Oh, PK's got to be careful that he doesn't damage himself unnecessarily. This is the battle for third place. And, and again, a lot of people were saying Nelson PK, great guy on the road and on the tarmac. But what can you do when you get it on the dirt? He has proven himself this weekend. And he's been very quick in lap times. And Deegan doing a good job to hold him off there. Pretty heavy contact, but nothing that Deegan hasn't seen before. The metal militia. This guy comes from <laughs> motocross, off-road trucks. He likes nothing more than leaning on another guy or just feeling that side-to-side -side contact. And we talked about the possibility of Brian being a spoiler here this weekend because he does have such great dirt driving skills. He's holding Nelson Piquet up right now, but this is also good fortune for Piquet. Again, everything has now changed with Ken Block damaged and really essentially out of this race where Johnny Weeman in the lead is going to make a huge points lead. But PK needs to work his way around Deegan because there are big points at stake for him, too. And look at PK just flinging his Ford Fiesta around. He's, you know, it's amazing here at the end of the season compared to where we were at the start of the year. Look at PK's car control. He's so confident, very aggressive, trying all sorts of different lines. As we see Weeman and Isaacson, and there's Ken Block. They're He's going to lap Ken down. Block. Now, who would have thought this could have possibly been the story here at Dirtfish? Ken Block being lapped by Johnny Weeman and Sverre Isaacson. Weeman has got past him. What? Wow, absolutely unbelievable. Oh, it's got to be so maddening for Ken Block to watch Johnny Weeman, who he's fighting with for the championship, lap him here in Seattle. And there's one more race left in the season in Las Vegas. And oh, there's Ken Block. Oh, a tragedy. A tragedy. I'm just looking at the glare, too. That is incredibly difficult from 
a visibility standpoint, especially as the dirt builds on the windscreen, the dust builds. Two laps to go here. Isaacson, Johnny Weeman. Third place is Deegan, still battling with PK, and Reese Millen in fifth. So this would be a great result for Subaru and Sperry Isaacs. As you said, the Subaru loyalists here, this, this parking lot is absolutely full of WRXs. And on board with Weeman, and that gap that Isaacson had built has really diminished, especially trying to get through Ken Block there, the lap car. And I wonder if Weeman has a chance here. The gap down to 1.4, he has him in his sights. And we're going to come through to the white flag, which will signal one lap to go. Weeman is going to have to choose his opportunity very carefully. If you want to get past Farrah Isaacson, you're going to have to work incredibly hard. There's no doubt about that. As we can see, Isaacson come to the line. White flag, one lap to go. Weeman still not close enough to make a move of any kind. And Isaacson just needs to keep it together here on this final lap. A lot of points at stake. It's 50 points for first, 45 for second. And Johnny Weeman looks like he's coming out with at least 45 points. And that will really just blow this championship wide open again. Not only with Weeman, but with PK Jr. If he can hold on to the fourth spot or even get around Deegan on this final lap. With blocks troubles, that really puts things wide open heading into Vegas for the final round. Weeman doing everything he can to close the gap. Just three corners to go. Coming out of that planer building, 600 feet long. They travel it over 70 miles an hour. And this is it. Time is running out for Johnny Weeman to get past Vera Isaacson. Looks like Isaacson is going to take the win. Here we go. One final corner here in Seattle. And it is going to be Sfera Isaacson that wins Red Bull Global Rally Cross Seattle. What a great result for him. Looking further back, there's Deegan and then PK who will come home fourth. Pretty solid day for PK, especially given Ken Block's problems as we see Ken come across the line with a severely disabled car. He held on, but unfortunately that's a ninth place finish, one lap down. There's Reese Millen coming to the line to complete the top five. And you look at that, Sverre Isaacson takes the win here at Dirtfish Rally School in Snoqualmie, just outside of Seattle. But Ken Block, disaster strikes him at the start of the race, and this points championship is blown wide open. We'll check in with our winners when we come back. Great racing here today from the Dirtfish Rally School. You never know what you're going to get at a GRC race. And today, his first win in his GRC career and the first ever win for Subaru in GRC, Sverre Isaacson from Norway takes it. And he's putting a punishment on the roof of that <laughs> Subaru, but he doesn't care. Oh, well, he's not going to need that Subaru for just a couple of weeks. Isaacson wins it over Johnny Weeman. Yeah, Johnny Weeman, though, making big championship points up. But today was all about Isaacson. Yes, Sverre Isaacson, the first win for someone is always so sweet. He looked very happy, and right now he's down with Kristen Kenny. What a huge day for Subaru and for yourself. The first win for Subaru ever in the history of GRC. What does it mean, Sverre, to do it right here at Dirtfish? Yes, uh, this is really important for the team. We have fought so long time for these things, and we have been there. So, some race there, and, and, uh, but now, back here, uh, it's, it's amazing, you know. I, uh, it was so good, you know. The, I have 100% control over the, the whole aiming. It was so good. The car was functioning perfect, and the launch was like an Isaac's launch from Europe. So the final was first, first, and the first was over. Oh, well, that was really, really good. Yeah! All emotions. Congratulations, Farah and Subaru. Very happy and out of breath from all that dancing. Sverre Isaacson takes it, but the points now. This is a big change. Massive change blown wide open as we head to Vegas for the last round with Ken Block's issues. Johnny Weeman goes to the point. Nelson PK Jr. closes up, and Scott Speed still hanging in there in fourth. So Weeman leads the points going to our last race. Kristen Kenny is caught up with Johnny. First of all, Johnny, what were you thinking when you lapped Ken Block out there? Uh, actually, I saw already on the Joker when I came out from the Joker that he has a problem. That's uh, that's not how I want to win the championship. But 
Uh, I was clean all the race. I was catching Ferrer, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't enough. Uh, I'm really happy for him too, but uh, it's, it's amazing to be this consistent. Well, amazing. You are the new points leader, 12 points ahead of Ken Block. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't wait for it here in, in, in a dirt track. I'm, I'm pretty sure Vegas will fit us a lot better. And uh, it's all about Vegas now. It is all about Vegas, the rookie in first place. How about that, guys? A big surprise in what we thought would happen. The story here, though, all about this crash by Ken. Ken goes for the Joker on lap one, but misjudges the breaking point, then comes swinging across in front of Tanner Faust, who had nowhere to avoid the incident, ends up in the ravine. And, of course, Ken Block with the damage to the right rear. And look at the glare here, Tess. I wonder if this had something to do with it for Ken Block. Really tough to see on the start. Uh, Ken Block, a bad day. He's down with Kristen. Ken, how quickly things can change. What happened on that first lap? Yeah, well, I, looking into the sun there on the start, I, I just missed the breaking point because I just couldn't see as clear as I should have been able to, but we were looking straight into the sun. So I, I went wide trying to go into the Joker and, you know, kind of bounced off the wall there and not that big of a deal. And so I was, thought, I'd, oh, slot right in behind Sphere here, and all of a sudden, boom, big hit on the back. And uh, just, I think it was Tanner just really damage the side of my car, suspension, and, and the tires. So I just did what I could to limp around the track and try and get whatever points I could. And I knew that my points leading championship was going to be gone, but I, I'll never give up, man. Press on regardless. I, it's all going to be down to Vegas now. I just hope I, I have enough points still to maybe keep within reach that I can, you know, have a good battle with them and hopefully win, but we'll see. Well, Ken Blocks, 12 points back behind Johnny Weeman. Disappointing day for Ken, but a great day for Sphera Isaacson and for Johnny Weeman on that podium. And how about Brian Deegan? I mean, not a full-time competitor to come here with this field and come out with a podium finish is super impressive.